extraction and fee sponsorship. Hi everyone, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Um, we'll be speaking about account abstraction. I, I think I believe most of you were here for the last panel. Can I have a raise of hands about account abstraction? Uh, just a little bit, okay. So, anyone familiar with account abstraction? Okay, so I'm not going to be speaking uh, a lot about ERC-47. I'll be speaking about the specific components and I'll give a quick intro. I have 15 minutes. So I'll be quick, so if, and I'll try to give a few uh, minutes at the end um, for questions. So uh, quickly, account abstractions component. Uh, if you're, just to summarize it, uh, I can just like, put it in, in, into five components. Uh, the signer app, which is usually a mobile app or an extension, or uh, you have seen like embedded wallets recently. Uh, you have the entry point contract, which is the global entry point contract everybody's using. Um, and you have accounts, which it could be a safe account, contract account, it could be any type of accounts. And you have bonders, which is the validators that take uh, this new type of transactions on account abstraction for user operations, and then they submit them on chain. And then the last component I'll be speaking about are paymasters, which is the entity that will be responsible for paying gas on behalf of a user. And this is one of the most exciting like, components uh, for us at Candid. I didn't give an intro of what we do, so we do, uh, uh, we do a, an account abstraction in mobile wallet and we also do infrastructure for others to build smart contract wallets at Candid Labs. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, a little bit of history. Um, meta transaction or sponsoring gas isn't something new. Like, uh, a lot of uh, players in the field have been working a lot uh, to make meta transaction happen, specifically uh, ERC-2771, which allows DApps to integrate uh, a way to send meta transactions for wallets like MetaMask or EOAs. Um, the problem is, DApps had to do a lot of the work. They had to do like integrate and send the meta transaction themselves, and this is where pretty much like uh, it stopped. Like every time someone makes a new DApp, Uniswap actually have to do the meta transaction themselves. But now with 47, you can call it smart accounts enabling meta transactions. You would not only you get like all the function, uh, functionality of smart accounts in the logic of, a, of a programmable accounts, but you also do come in then with meta transactions, which is the paymaster component. So I'll be speaking about different uh, types of paymasters. Uh, the first one is token paymaster. Maybe you're familiar with it. You saw like the many use cases for it. It essentially enables a user to pay gas in an ERC20. So the most obvious use case you're, you have a wallet and you, want, you don't want to introduce the concept of native uh, token or ETH and you just let, let the user deposit USDC and let them pay gas in USDC. This is very obvious use case that many wallets enabled today um, and pay token in a stable coin that their on-ramp provider uh, provided them. Another use case is giving uh, governance tokens a utility as gas. So think of any ERC20 can be used as gas. If a user has a, some meme coins they want to get rid of, they can like, pay gas in it. Uh, if you're a protocol that, you're, um, that you want to give utility to your token, uh, it can be used as gas payments. And the beautiful thing about it is that as a DAP or a protocol, you don't have to do anything uh, code-wise. You just go talk to wallets or paymasters and tell them, hey, I want to use my ERC20 as, as token payment across all participating wallets. Uh, second uh, type of paymasters, verifying paymasters. This type of paymasters allows you to, it's an option logic validation. 
and it's based on condition. And I'll explain a few use cases, but essentially, it's, it allows for a service to say, hey, I'm gonna, I, I see this user operation by wallet, do I sponsor it or not? If all good, passes condition, then it, it returns it back with its signature and says, okay, I'm gonna be sponsoring this, this transaction. So where does it come from? So where, where is it used? So DAP onboarding. Um, this, is, this is very obvious because when, 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 when you're a DAP, what is your user retention if uh, a user doesn't have a native token? I think uh, by the time they go to an exchange, buy the ETH and then come back to your wallet, you pretty much lost your user. Um, so that's the, you have around 20% user retention. And that number, I came up with it, I don't think it's real, but just a guesstimate. Uh, if the user is new to crypto, then you pretty much have a 1% user retention. So you can consider like sponsoring gas as your cost of acquisition. And if, if most users are, if we're really going through layer, layer twos, and this is a screenshot I got today from all the layer twos like uh, L2 fees, uh, even if we say one dollar is the cost that I'm going to be sponsoring the first transaction for a user, you can consider it as a cost of, of acquisition and also a cost of retention and also the cost of transaction fees that is much less than what Visa and Mastercard charges because if you think about it, they, Visa charges a merchant 3% on transaction fees and this is what you'd be paying if you'd be sponsoring on your DAP uh, the cost of retention for your user. Another type of uh, paymasters, privacy preserving paymasters. The idea is that if you enable a paymaster to sponsor gas for accounts, you can, you can create private accounts in that sense. And maybe you've seen how Tornado Cash works, but the way it works is that if you deposit in Tornado Cash, if you withdraw on a new address, you need the relayer because you don't have ETH in that address. So you need a relayer to withdraw on your behalf and let's say these relayers are sanctioned, uh, you can use paymasters to sponsor the gas and use the same network of ERC-437 to act as a relayer. And it's literally a censorship resistant way to, to use Tornado Cash and have private accounts um, in that transaction. Uh, fiat paymasters, so let's say you have a user who wants to pay with credit card and the paymaster can pay it on their behalf, you can have micro payments these micropayments can, okay, I'm gonna pay you two dollars with my credit card and then the paymaster is gonna pay uh, for me. Cross roll-up paymasters. You have users, you have a new chain, and they want you to discover that new roll-up. Um, so paymasters can pay for users on a different chain. And let's say user on Optimism, they don't have any, any ETH on, on Arbitrum. They can pay on Optimism and start transacting on, uh, on Arbitrum without going through a bridge, uh, and it would be instant, uh, instant gas payments on there too. And that's it, yeah, so I, I hope I was quick, uh, and I'll leave a few questions um, for the audience. Thank you so much. Any questions? Let me, let me give you the microphone. I can shout. Yep, you can shout. <laughs> Uh, how does exactly the cross-network uh, paymaster works? Um, that's a good question. So you can think of paymasters as uh, it's a very it's a service, right? It doesn't have to be uh, decentralized because a user uh, can always pay uh, ETH with their account. So paymasters are, are, are a centralized service, and they could okay if they are operating on a chain. They can also operate um, on a different chain, and they can have like an off-chain logic that says, "Okay, if I have uh, someone pays me on that on that specific chain, I'll pay them on the off on the off-chain part." There's no need for complex like bridging um, equations or, or cross-messaging uh, stuff. It's really a, a central piece where Paymaster offer this service for an easy to use uh, uh, gas for other rollers. Yep. What is the incentive for the paymaster? So the incentive is for the paymaster, they're offering a service. So if you're, we can talk about the different paymasters here, but for example, a token paymaster, they give you a service, I, you give me USDC, I pay with you an ETH, but I'll charge a little bit of commission. You won't see it that much on rollups, but it helps me like, okay, avoid 
let's say the price fluctuation on ETH, and I'll, I'll handle this for you. For gasless transactions, this is where DAPS comes in. You can think of DAPS as merchants. You go pay in a credit card, the merchant always covers the fees. At the end of the day, it's the client who pays it, but uh, that's another equation. But the DAPS sponsored the, uh, the, the 3% like Visa. And the same thing for, for DAPS, they'll be uh, paying the paymaster. Uh, the gas fees plus an extra fee to provide the service for uh, all wallets that they use. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, but I mean, the, the incentive uh, you kind of, you worth it for them to spin up like uh, nodes and start. Paymasters don't spin up nodes. It's, a, it's an option you can think of it as a, as a backend, uh, ver specifically verifying paymasters. Uh, they don't spin up nodes. The node part is the bundler, so th this is a different. Uh, this is a different entity. They they are the validators, who and there's a whole uh, incentive around like bundlers and the way it works. But paymasters are are simply like uh, uh, paying the gas. That's the uh, feeling. Does that answer your question? Partially, maybe we can try. Yep. Okay. And um, so you're able to find. Max information in the Telegram if you need direct information from him. There's one more question. Yep, there's one more question. Yes. Yeah, uh, are you making all of those features or are you focusing on some of those features? Uh, so, Candid, we're, we're, uh, we're focusing on the first two use cases, which is verifying paymaster uh, gasless, um, token paymaster, and uh, privacy preserving paymasters. The cross roller paymaster. Uh, we'll be rolling out uh, in the future. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. And uh, we do have your information in Telegram group, so if you guys have additional questions in the future, make sure you drop in the chat. And we will take five minutes of break, and next up we are going to have... oh. Actually, we're not going to have a break. Our panel is already here. So we're going to have a developer DAO to give us a panel. Give me one second. Yeah, I will take the micro microphone from you. I think I'm going to continue chatting with the audience. Yeah, sure. If you don't mind entertaining them. Um. I lost the mic. Oh, here it is. So, I mean, uh, we covered quickly like paymasters, but there's a lot of exciting things in account abstraction. Uh, the previous panel talked about uh, specifically uh, logic in, uh, in securing an, an account. So think of seed phrases, which I think well, it's the most like, horrible you ask to secure an account. Um, so, securing accounts, in Ethereum is much more challenging just like an email and a password like Google. Um, so the previous panel spoke about security tape, which I think really bypasses uh, the security of and the user experience from a Web2 perspective. And the way it works is that your security tape or biometrics acts as a private key and you can log in instantly with an account and it's really much faster than a Web2 like uh, experience. And you should yeah, uh, look it up if you're interested. Uh, uh, pass keys implementation or securing trade, securing account. I guess that Thank awesome. you so much, Mark. Okay, that's my gold star over right here. So put him on the stage. You give another two minute talk. Thank you so much. Yeah, you can just leave it over here. <laughs> All right, so our next panel, developer DAO, please welcome to the stage. We have three members. I as well, Kepster, Dapa Dan, and Prinza Momin. Three powerhouse from the developer DAO. Please take a seat. And then Raha from Biconomy is going to be our moderator. And they will be talking about fostering, supporting community.